It is National Hot Dog Day, and Ernie's will be in town today over on West Fort Williams, right next door to Peking Garden today from 10 until 3. So enjoy National Hot Dog Day with a hot dog from Ernie's Hot Dog and Catering. Here's a guy right here that's a connoisseur of hot dogs, Steve Master. Steve, good morning. Good morning, sir. How are you? You eat a hot dog from time to time, I love you? me a good hot dog at a ballpark. We don't like boiled hot dogs, all right? No, we were having no. that discussion. No. We don't boil hot dogs. They need to be grilled, a little crisp it's, on the it's end. It's against the God's rules or something I, to have a boiled I hot dog. I think there ought to be directions <laughs> on the pack, so. <laughs> hey, a big <laughs> weekend for Silicon's 11-year-old rec baseball team, and Man, we get to the top of the mountain, couldn't quite get over it, but it was a great tournament, wasn't it? These kids did great. Uh, messed up and lost uh, a game against uh, the people who ended up winning. So fought their way back through the loser's bracket, ended up playing three games down there, about 115 heat index. They fought super, super hard. Came up short by one run, but I mean, these kids have done the work. They they went down there, they represented us well, and I mean, we're super proud of them. People, and I when I played, I, I can remember it, people might not understand how difficult it is to get in a loser's bracket and climb all the way back. Man, that's tough. Well, that that's the thing. Um, when we were in the winner's bracket, uh, we won the first couple, and we would have had two games left and then, you know, the if game and the championship game. But, you know, messed up and lost to, against a really good team, mm -hmm. not taking anything away from the other team. And, you know, that brings pitching into there. And, you know, it, it just makes for a longer road. But our boys were up for the challenge. Um, won the first game against the people in the winner's bracket. So we went to the if game and had runners on base, had, you know, just situations come up and came up one short. Wow. And you talking about tender hearts? Kids got tender hearts. I had to break their heart. It they did. Um, you know, the like I said, these kids right here play a lot of baseball. Mm -hmm. They uh, they do a lot of travel ball too. They, right? the, a yeah. lot of these kids play travel ball, play year round. They've been in the spotlight in big tournaments and stuff like that. And we tried to make sure that they knew what they had already accomplished to get there. Yeah. So you know, they have nothing to hang their hats on. You know, they 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 should be super proud of you know, what they accomplished, and they fought hard. I mean, it's not like they left anything on the field. So, you know, there was a few people that would love to have that World Series ring, but at the end of the day, after three games at 115 degrees, I'm sure they mm -hmm. were asleep before they got out in the parking lot, so. I did not know until this developed that there was a World Series, you know, and uh, so proud to have a Silicaga team involved in that. that. That is high cotton there. It's only the second one that I'm aware of. Mm. And you know, you and I have been in this little town yeah. for a really long time. Um, we went to regionals when I was 12. There's another group that went to regionals. We had a, a Babe Ruth team made it to the World Series just a couple years ago. Um, we had a team at regionals last week at Mobile, and now we got a team going to Starkville for regionals for Babe Ruth this week. So, when, baseball is strong in Sylacauga, Alabama. Boy, there's no doubt about it. Steve Masters, CEO of Sylacauga Parks and Rec, our guest. And, and it takes a lot of uh, effort, a lot of cooperation uh, to put something like this together and make it work. It, it, it's amazing. Um, each one of these teams, we like I said, we had three teams that's traveled and stayed a, an extended period of time out of out of town. Um, our community always steps up. Every one of these teams raised at least over five thousand dollars to wow. help offset the cost. Um, all of our coaches working, you know, taking off work, working extra time, practicing, you know, setting their life aside to mm -hmm. go work with these kids. So, I mean, it is truly a community effort. So, when these people put Sylacauga on their chest and they're going to another town, like, this town helps them. They push them. So, it's a true representation of how great this town is. And it shows also... Uh, the success of Sylacauga Parks and Rec. Oh yeah. Because, you know, to be able to help these kids, and not just now, but, but in the future as well. Right. You know, Hunter's doing a great job with athletics. All of our numbers have grown. Um, my philosophy when I came in and Hunter's adopted that is, our job is to get these kids ready for the next level. Mm -hmm. You know, you're, you're going to win an eight-year-old trophy, but that's not going to be the story you tell your grandkids. You know, our job is to, to get these kids that's going to the middle school and then the high school and hopefully on and beyond 
is to get them the opportunities to learn the game, to practice the game, to play the game. And it's really paying off, you know, our numbers. Anytime you got more numbers, you got more kids to make better all-stars. And right now, things are just clicking right along. The kids in the 11-year-old uh, World Series down in Baton Rouge, did they get to do some fun things outside of baseball? Uh, the first couple of days, um, thank goodness, they played most of the games first thing in the morning. Like you know, 8 like o'clock? Like we started at 8 <laughs> o'clock in the morning. Um, we had to drive through LSU's campus to get there. Um, so a lot of us, I, you know, I was a tourist myself, went and checked out Mike the Tiger over there next mm -hmm. to the stadium, you know, walked around LSU's campus. Obviously, you got Bass Pro Shops and really good restaurants and stuff like that in a big city. But, you know, come evening time, most everybody came in, you know, enjoyed the air conditioner and yeah. got ready for the next day. Yeah. Going back to the final game, you talked about we had runners on base, uh, had several opportunities to win the baseball game. Sure, sure they did. And, you know, everybody executed like they were supposed to. I mean, we had kids hitting line drives to the opposite side of the field, and other team just made plays. I mean, there were several times during this game where you just sit there and you clap for the other team because the kid made a great play, or, you know, the pitcher or catcher did what they were supposed to to keep the runner from advancing. Mm -hmm. and. You know, that's just good baseball. Yeah. You know, people who sit around and watch good baseball, you admire when another team does good, mm -hmm. pat them on the butt, and then go back in and try to beat them. You know? uh, and to show you how little I know about this particular team, I don't know who the coaches are, but whoever they were uh, put a team together and uh, almost won it all. That, that's the great thing. Um, this is a great, obviously a talented group of kids, but the group of coaches put together on this team, uh, Shannon Thornberry was the um, head coach, and his kid was on the team, but mm -hmm. he was a base runner. I mean, so he, he's got a history of coaching high school baseball around here. Chase Fowler played the game, you know, at the college level. Yeah. Um, coach Ward played the game at the college level. Blake Carmack, who owns his own business and one of the hardest working people I know, took time off work, you know, traveled up there and i tell you, they taught the game right. They didn't play daddy ball. They put the kids where they were supposed mm -hmm. to be, adjusted the lineup as kids were, you know, getting hot and getting cold. So it, it's one of the best coach all-star teams that I've been a part of watching, and um, hopefully we can keep that tradition going. Finally, before we go this morning, what's something you'll remember about that World Series trip? I mean, first time going to a World Series for that age group. Been to one for Babe Ruth, but you know, Babe Ruth, those kids are too cool to be excited, oh, right? Yeah. <laughs> but, um, you know, these kids walk out there and you know, you see the banner and you see They're the kids taking old, the picture right? with the banner and um, it, it was super exciting. And like I said, these kids are only 11. There's a 12 year old World Series next year. So hopefully we can go mm -hmm. back and bring the big ring home this time. All right, Steve, thanks a lot for dropping by. Congratulations to our Silicaga 11-year-old uh, team that was in the World Series. Almost won it, finished runner-up down in Baton Rouge, and uh, we'll do it again one day. Thanks for coming by. Yes, sir. Steve Masters, CEO of Silicaga Parks and Rec, our guest this morning. Don't go away, we've got more after this.